Testing, one, two, three, testing. Testing, one, two, three, testing. Hey, Kyle, can I just pull the, uh, oh, here you are. <laughs> it was like. Testing, one, two, three, testing. Testing, one, two, three. Okay, uh, thanks to Justin, I get to play some of my beats. I can't hear him on here, though. Okay, good afternoon. This is um, Monday at 3.30. Welcome to the Green Neighborhood Initiative radio program where we talk about living in harmony with nature and doing so if possible in a way that raises funds for your community service, nonprofit organizations. My name is Eric, and I'm your host and producer of the Green Neighborhood uh, radio program here at riverwestradio.com and River West Neighborhood at this River West Video I mean, Store on East back. Center Street. And once again, as always, this program is dedicated to the one I love, the mighty Aminetta. I miss you. I wish you were doing a program with me today. But I look forward for us teaming up again sometime soon. Now, today, um, if you want to uh, contact us or call in with questions or comments, you can reach us at 414-935-2951. Again, that's 414-935-2951. What we're going to be doing today is we're going to be sharing some hopefully helpful information for you from two of my favorite books. Uh, one, of course, is The Green Goes With Everything, authored by Sloan Barnett. And Green Go With Everything talks about simple steps to a healthier life and a cleaner pro, uh, cleaner planet. And the second one is uh, by Seymour and Garadet, uh, entitled Blueprint for a Green Planet. I just want to start off by saying that uh, <clears throat> unless um, we are unfortunately either um, incarcerated or incapacitated, we're going to be spending our money in several broad categories. Uh, we're going to be spending our money on energy, electricity, uh, specifically, and more specifically, we're going to always have a need for light bulbs. Likewise, uh, eventually, sooner or later, everyone's going to clean their home. Um, it's only a matter of time. Uh, some people uh, really are, um, you know, really really focus about a clean abode other people let it go for a while but in either case eventually we're all going to clean our home and as a result as well as a result of our purchases that we make we're eventually going to dispose or remove everything in our home one of three ways either it's going to go down the drain or the, the toilet or we're going to put it in the garbage or we're going to carry it out of our homes uh, by way of our bodies from consuming it either through our mouth or through our skin or on our clothes so I said that to say that one of the most convenient, simplest ways to raise money for your church, mosque, or synagogue, or for your parent-teacher association, or for your uh, uh, neighborhood organization, such as the River West Neighborhood Association, is to buy earth-friendly light bulbs by going to uh, establishing a, a website for your favorite charity which uh, supporters can go to and um, either go to their website and order uh, various light bulbs for their use or call a number and place an order and have the light bulbs delivered. Here's a, guitar. a second way, convenient way, to raise money in a way that is consistent with our contemporary patterns of consumption is to do likewise with your household cleaning products. But uh, instead of buying ready-to-use off-the-shelf products, which typically um, it's um, 95 99% water and very little cleaning solution um, as well as being toxic to your home and outer environment you can simply establish a website for your favorite charity where supporters once again instead of spending additional time going shopping um, purchasing off-the-shelf ready-to-use uh, home care products you can purchase super concentrated biodegradable healthy home care products that have packaging which is recyclable and that leads us into the third way of 
generating money in an earth-friendly way for those uh, nonprofit organizations that we support and care about is through our refuse. We can uh, recycle with the relationship uh, established with the local recycling company. They will donate the proceeds from your um, donations to your organization. So if it's two dollars that you're bringing in to have recycled, or whether it value totals twenty dollars, it doesn't matter. You simply would name the organization, let's say the River West Neighborhood Association, and then they will cut a check for whatever the cash value of the recyclables are to RNA within thirty days. So for other helpful tips of how to have a lifestyle more in harmony with nature, purchasing uh, products that are earth-friendly and disposing of the, the trash or refuse in an earth-friendly way. Um, this is the program you want to listen to. Again, the Green Neighborhood every Monday at 3.30 from 3.30 to 4 o'clock. And if you have questions or comments, again, my name is Eric, and we're at 414-935-2951. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to break off into uh, Blueprint for a Green Planet, again, authored by Seymour and Garadette. And just a little summary, uh, Blueprint for a Green Planet is a terrific book that sets forth concrete prescriptions for individual and community alike that can halt and reverse the massive environmental damage we are inflicting on our planet uh, from our contemporary patterns of consumption. John Seymour, the father of so-called father of self-sufficiency, and Herbert Giradet describe hundreds of simple and sensible alternatives that all of us can adopt to restore our planet to health. Because at the end of the day, we all have common ground, that being planet Earth. There is no alternative. We don't have a moon base or a uh, space station that we can uh, run to or any other uh, celestial uh, plan B. Uh, plan A, planet Earth, is the only plan we have, and it is our common ground, and we need to take care of it accordingly, being mindful of the decisions we make with our dollars. You go on to, um, <coughs> moreover, the book um, tells the all too familiar story of man's ravaging his environment, deforestation, soil erosion, acid rain, pollution, and toxic waste. Seymour and Garrett show how daily activities such as eating, washing, driving contribute to pollution and waste on a worldwide scale. But because so much of the environment damage results from fulfilling our consumer needs, Individuals and consumers can set this process into reverse. Blueprint for a Green Planet will become the environmental guidebook, hopefully, for concerned individuals everywhere, a manifesto for people of all nations who are anxious to live in a healthy world in a healthy manner. Now, let's crack it open and um, share some good information. Okay, well, some general contents of the book uh, includes, uh, let's start with, it, it covers good housekeeping in an age of waste. Chapter two is real or processed water. Three is farming for the future. Four is food for health or wealth. Five is dismantling the garbage mountain. Six is curing the cleanliness obsession. Seven is health without drugs. Eight is the hazard-free home. Nine, gardening without chemicals. Ten, the low energy house. Eleven, the answer to car pollution. Twelve, action behind the home. So there are the twelve chapters within uh, the book Blueprint for a Green Planet. So, um, let's see here. Let's start. at the beginning. Yeah. Now we're basically going to be jumping about yeah. within chapter uh, one primarily and maybe some other relevant areas within the book. But uh, we're going to be talking about good housekeeping in an age of waste. Um, this is going to cover six uh, principles for ecological living. Well, first, let's talk about 
uh, a world out of balance. Anyone has brewed beer that knows that yeast is an organism that lives and proliferates by consuming sugar and excreting alcohol, and in the end, it is finally killed, poisoned by its own excrement. When the alcohol content of the beer reaches a certain point, most of the yeast will die, and the processes that cause fermentation in the tub of beer will cease. There's a clear parallel between the yeast in the tub of beer and mankind in the tub of earth. Modern industry survives by consuming hydrocarbons such as oil, coal, and gas, and excreting carbon dioxide. The proportion of carbon dioxide in our atmosphere has risen dramatically since the invention of the steam engine and is rising at an ever-increasing rate at this very moment. But plants, especially trees, work the other way around. They consume carbon dioxide and excrete oxygen. In this way, terrestrial life is sustainable, provided there are enough plants. However, modern consumership has created two exacerbating factors. The first factor is the first factor is that we are releasing the vast amount of carbon that was locked up millions of years ago by the plants of the past. Every ton of coal we burn releases carbon dioxide into the air. The second factor is that the forests of the world, by far the most important air purifiers on the planet, are being destroyed at a terrifying rate. 200 square miles of forest are being burned or cut down with every day that goes by and are not replanted. Half of all the wood that is felled is burnt, thus further adding to the atmosphere's load of carbon dioxide. Quite obviously, if we continue on this course, we will go the way of the yeast when the beer becomes too strong. So, in essence, what we should consider doing is <clears throat> some, applying some creative thinking uh, with respect to our household maintenance and our uh, typical uh, consumership, as well as our waste disposal in terms of how we can uh, reduce um, the amount of carbon dioxide that we are directly or indirectly con um, generating, as well as how we can reduce our pollution. And speaking of pollution, the problem of pollution, yeast destroys itself by a single act of poisoning, but the ways by which humans threaten to destroy themselves are abundant and varied. And they do not only threaten our planet in the far future, the most significant of these short-term threats is the way in which we are farming our land. Vast quantities of poisons are dumped onto the soil every year and the heart, as farmers call it, is going out of the land. We can continue to grow crops on the debilitated soil simply by dumping ever heavier loads of artificial fertilizer on it, but this cannot continue forever. Soil is created for rock at a rate of two-thirds each every 400 years. On nearly all the arable land of our planet, it is being lost at a thousand times that rate. Soil erosion is now accelerating out of control, and as we shall see later, if unrestrained, it will become catastrophic. So, <clears throat> the legacy of consumption, water and air pollution, have made huge areas of the industrialized world unfit for forests and agriculture, as well as the visible pollution produced by smoke and waste. There is potentially more dangerous invisible contamination caused by modern toxic chemicals. And some victims of pollution are not readily apparent. However, every year millions of seabirds are engulfed by oil slicks. Some are rescued and cleaned up, but far more perish unnoticed where wildlife and industry, <coughs> and industry meet. The result is often a disaster for animals. In a good um, movie, to watch a good DVD to now watch uh, feet, with the I family is Happy Feet. Like it. It's about uh, some penguins and um, the their lives um, in the uh, frigid uh, parts but of the planet and what they so have to endure or go I through hey, by girl, way of the pollution that we typically dispose of. Much of our plastic, uh, be it uh, plastic Best water bottles or the plastic the loops that uh, can you know, hold together a six pack of beer, much of the plastic ends up in our water. And unfortunately, many of the sea creatures are killed by it because they become entangled by it or they die slowly by way of consumption because 
ultraviolet waves of the sun eventually will break down plastic um, a lot faster than plastic would otherwise degrade if placed in a, in a landfill. However, many of the sea creatures or, or, or fowl that live off of the sea consume um, the broken down plastic thinking mistaken that it's food when it's not and it's a slow and very painful death but you know there's a saying that goes what goes around comes around and some of the food that seafood that we consume uh, is uh, our is seafood that unfortunately has ingested the very trash or garbage that we have uh, unwittingly disposed of in uh, in their sea environment so I just want to make those points, those aside points that uh, essentially what goes around comes around and we need to be mindful of uh, the toxins that we introduce into the environment. But it's easier to do that when we consider the toxins that we introduce into our homes. Thus, I urge all listeners to consider that <clears throat> there are replacements to conventional uh, so-called household cleaning products that you may purchase off the shelf. You can uh, do various searches and research products that are biodegradable, that are earth friendly. But more importantly, or I should say it's equally important, is you want to consider something that is concentrated because bulk purchases may go away towards um, reducing your budget, but it doesn't do anything with respect to the rate of consumption. And by that, I mean that if you're buying a carton full of product X to clean your home, you're probably going to use each bottle in that box or carton at the same rate. Thus, you're going to be disposing of plastic at the same rate. So if you were to switch from ready to use household cleaning products to biodegradable and or concentrated household products, that means that you're disposing of plastics and the containers at a slower rate why because you can take the concentrated uh, cleaning solution put it in a dispenser bottle add the appropriate amount of water from your tap that you want for a cleaning strength and go about your typical business of cleaning your home there is no reason there is no advantage to any of us to pay for the shipping and freight of water from um, one state to Wisconsin and Milwaukee in particular just so that we can buy it off the shelf. We don't need the water that's being transported from the point of purchase. What we need is the cleaning solution from the um, producer of that product. So whenever possible, you want to A, switch to a biodegradable, super concentrated product that is in a recyclable or biodegradable container. And for more information on uh, where to find such products, again, you can contact Eric at the Green Neighborhood Initiative uh, radio program at 414-935-2951. Our website is uh, greenneighborhood.myshackley.com. Um, and again, we're here every Monday at 3.30 from 3.30 to 4. And the best, uh, a, a third benefit of uh, using some of um, the kinds of products that uh, we recommend for your home is that they can be used as a alternative for fundraising, particularly for schools, because after all, do <coughs> we really need to feed our children more processed foods, i.e. frozen pizzas or cookies or candies and so forth? I don't think so. Considering the increasing ever-increasing incidence of childhood obesity, which is running rampant with uh, our children today. And it's going to be a burden upon them individually as adults, as well as us as a nation with respect to the ever-increasing health, excuse me, health care costs. So if we fundraise in our schools and in our churches or places of worship, in ways that are environmentally friendly, A, we're doing a, a benefit towards the environment, and B, <coughs> we're not reinforcing unhealthy eating habits. So we're educating and highlighting the priority and the significance of doing the right thing uh, in the course of raising money for uh, a righteous cause.
So let's talk about the power of the purse. Even though as individuals we may not have much immediate power, at least we all have one piece of muscle that nobody can take away from us, and that's the power of the purse. There is an expression that says that with considerable truth, the hand that rocks the cradle rules the world. Perhaps we could reword it thus and still speak with, with truth, the hand that rules the purse strings rocks the world. Every one of us, if we have any money at all, can influence the course of history if we buy things that if we buy things, production of which or the disposal of which causes pollution, then we ourselves are polluters and there is nothing else to be said about it. On the other hand, if we refuse to buy things that are contributing to the destruction of our planet, then we are refusing also to contribute unwittingly to that destruction. And when enough of us are all refusing to contribute in whatever small way, then the destruction itself will stop. Using the power of the purse needs some straight thinking to contract the feeling that whatever we do, we cannot do right. It sometimes seems that nearly everything we buy is polluting. Just as an American film actress once said, everything I do is either immoral or fattening, so we may feel that everything we do is helping to ruin the planet. We may feel that it is a hopeless case and not worth bothering with. The cure for this negative attitude is to become better informed, for it is not true that everything we buy or do is harmful to the world. In fact, many things that most of us do are good for it. There is no need for despair. We cannot all of, we cannot all of us become instantly, miraculously perfect, but we can try. So, in a word, everyone may not be able to afford to buy an all-electric car or a hybrid car, hybrid car or you may not be in a position to put solar panels on your home or install a, a wind generating um, um, apparatus on your property. But every time you consider you're going to purchase something to clean your home, um, you can make a difference in that way, especially with respect to water. One of the simplest things to do is just filter your water at your home. If you're concerned about the quality of uh, tap water, the simplest thing to do, the most certain and the least expensive thing to do is to filter your water at the tap. Because otherwise, buying plastic uh, water uh, contributes to more plastic pollution either in the landfill or in the oceans. Moreover, you're extracting water from a remote location instead of using the water locally available. And that process or pattern of consumption is referred to as virtual water. And we need to reduce our virtual water consumption, be it in the form of plastic water bottles or buying fruit that's uh, grown from another state. Uh, it's better to eat um, locally, eat in season, and therefore be eat and consume in harmony with how nature grows um, food anyway within our particular area that is Wisconsin. So we're about to wrap it up right now with the Green Neighborhood <coughs> Initiative, but some priorities that you want to um, consider uh, just briefly is re with respect to um, housekeeping. And here's a four-point plan for improving the environment, a positive action plan. You can first, one, assess the consequences. Most everyday activities have some effect on the environment. They either improve it <coughs> or make it deteriorate. A few leave it unchanged. Deciding which category any action falls into is an essential part of conserving the environment. Secondly, encourage positive changes. If something enhances the environment, it should be recommended to others wherever possible. Individual action is only successful if enough individuals pursue it. Word of mouth works best. Thirdly, Avoid causing damage. Many actions, like throwing away excessive amounts of garbage, wasting water, or using pesticides, fall into the category of avoidable damage to the environment. In nearly all cases, this kind of damage can be prevented without any noticeable change in the quality of life. And lastly, cut down what, we cannot, what cannot be cut out. Some actions, like driving a car, are almost impossible to avoid. In these cases, the best approach is to take steps to reduce the damage. So that may mean carpooling, or if you're um, able to do so, consider um, 
an electric car or a hybrid car or some car that is, um, you know, less uh, harmful to the environment than your t conventional automobile. So in closing, again, I want to thank you for your attention, and we hope to grow um, a legion of uh, green neighbors for our community that uh, will uh, be more in harmony with nature and in doing so raise money for the community services programs that we care about. Thank you and talk to you next week.